Okay, now let's sum up, shall we? Syndesmosis is what? Uh, Frank. A joint bound together by fibrous tissues. That's right. Now, you give us uh, an example. Um, Mike. Oh, the uh, lower end of the tibia and fibula. About here? Uh, just above the ankle joint. That's right. Now, give us another. Uh, Peter. Uh, is it the bones of the wrist? Okay, good. Well, that's all for today, then. Oh, thanks very much, thank Mr. Mr. Mallard. Mallard. Thank you, Mr. See you Mallard. later, then. Oh, what he means, of course, is he won't see you later. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, Frank. Yes. Ladies first. Have you got any manners? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Let's move. Can I go first now? Wait, wait first. Can I carry on? Told you before, Sally, you're going to have to look where you're going. I remember. Is George still around? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Hello. If you're looking for the principal, he isn't here. Nobody is, except me. Mallard. George Mallard. Well, uh, can I help you? They've all gone to watch the big parade, eh? Oh, yes, yes. I do the short straw, I'm afraid. Still, I can sit on television. Probably get a better view. <laughs> well, what was it? Just a word. Mr. Mullard, would you be a sweet It's lover? confidential. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize you had company. I'll be with you in a moment, Sally. Oh, sure. <laughs> confidential. Very. Mr. Mallard? You just missed him. Missed 
Jim. Oh, the back way. Oh. <laughs> Can I help? Oh, I just wanted him to post a letter for me, that's all. Well, simple enough. I don't myself. Oh, would you? Sally? Yes? You're just having a game of poker. Do you want to sit in? No, thanks. I've got some studying to catch up on. <laughs> if I can find the books. Tens on nines. Oh, good. I must have left it somewhere else. Mr. Mallard? No, miss. Uh, we're the plumbers. Plumbers? Yes, you've got some trouble upstairs in the staff quarters. Oh. Have we? Well, it's uh, up the stairs, along the yes, corridor. Yes, thank you, Miss. Thank you. My information's always right. All right, done. Oh, here, five o'clock. Thanks. Sally? Yes? Find your book? Yes. All of my own, too. George wasn't round. <coughs> He's probably upstairs watching the parade. He's more likely with the plumbers. Eh? Hey? Plumbers. No, I'll play these, I think. Well, we've got some trouble upstairs in the staff quarters. Two for me. I went to a big parade once, you know. Oh, here we go. Look, all I was going to say. It's only ribbing you, Mike. What was it like, the parade? Big. Lots of crowds. Colourful, really. Now, that's something I really wish I knew about. Colours. Well, we know red is hot and blue is cold. Yeah, it's not the same as actually having seen them. And what about shades of colour? Or purple, for instance. Now, I wonder what purple is like. Oh, fold. Yeah, me. Well, purple's sort of dark. <laughs> yeah, well, that's something we do know about dark. Yeah, but dark and rich. One. They use purple at funerals, you know. Oh, cheers, I'll remember that. <laughs> All right, then I'll go another two. Funny you know those plumbers. Come to think of it, they didn't smell right. <laughs> smell? <laughs> well, how should they smell? Well, I don't know. Well, like the men who did the roof. Sort of sweat and putty. Oh, like Mike, you mean? <laughs> what, <Watch> you? <laughs> but it's kind of a worky smell. I'll see you. Well, these were kind of soapy. A hint of aftershave. Oh. Well, I, uh, I suppose uh, plumbers do take baths as well as repair them. <laughs> Mine, I think. Hey, Pat, are you there? Yeah. Turn the radio over. Might as well all go to the big parade. My dear. Though the procession is still some way off, the 
crowd is beginning to gather. Already there is an air of occasion in this sleepy little English town, and it is an occasion. Five heads of state, together with a man who, some think, will single-handed change the course of history. And over there is the point where the motorcade will enter the town. Just under one and a half hours from now, his car will appear, and the moment this growing crowd has been waiting for will be here. One and a half hours. One hour, 27 minutes, 45 seconds. <laughs> I tell you, my information's reliable. It's too long. We got here too soon. There's time for something to go wrong. Relax. Nothing can go wrong in the kingdom of the blind. We're in. We're set. If he says so, that's good enough for me. A lot down there. Just as much prisoners as if we're bars on the windows. I'll fix it. We're in, we're set. Just a small hole. Leave it to Anderson. He'll plug it. Hello? Yes, Mr. Mollard is somewhere around. If you just hold on, I'll go and find him for you. Oh, who's speaking? Fine, if you just hold on. Hello? Sorry. Hello? Blind's dead. Well, probably hung up. No. No, it's completely dead. It was a Mr. Matcheson wanting to talk to George. You can tell him later. Yeah. What did he mean, Anderson, in the kingdom of the blind? The one-eyed man is king. <laughs> All okay now. For security reasons, he will, of course, be traveling in his special car, imported for the occasion. The car is equipped with bulletproof glass and solid steel bodywork as secure as a tank against any attack. It could be important. What could? Well, Mr. Murchison wanting to talk to George. I ought to find George and tell him. Who's deal? Mine, I think.
You know, we checked that before we set out. Yes, and now I'm checking it again. Any objections? Well, it seems to me we might be a little better off if you... Hello, Art. Uh, no, miss, he's, uh, he's not here at the moment. You see, he's, uh, he's gone downstairs to help my mate find the mains water supply, but he'll be back in a minute. Can I take a message? Oh, just tell him Mr. Murchison called. Mr. Murchison, yes, will do. Are you alone here? No. Well, I mean, uh, you're here as well, ain't you, eh? <laughs> doing up here anyway? Well, there isn't a water supply here, is there? Well, no, not exactly in here, but, uh, boy, you, you've got a header tank just up there under the roof and that's where your trouble lies. Look, don't you worry about it. I'll, uh, I'll tell him as soon as he gets back, yes? Oh, thank you. Careful. Don't worry. <laughs> Troubles. him yet? No. Frank, Frank, why should plumbers use gun oil? They don't. But they are. Upstairs. I smelt it. The same smell as my father's hunting rifle. <laughs> this is obviously your day for playing bloodhounds. Look, I'm going to the library. Do you want anything? No, thanks. Who can tell? I tell you, it is my letter. Oh, Sally, how can you be so sure? Well, by the weight. And I can feel the airmail sticker. It's mine. I know it's mine. Well, suppose it is. He just forgot to take it, that's all. How can all. he forget? He promised to mail it for me. And anyway, there's another thing. What? Well, he's still in the house. When I was upstairs, I stumbled. I felt his hand. Well, that explains the letter, then. If he hasn't left yet, he couldn't have mailed the letter, could he? Well, what's he still doing in the house? Well, I don't know. Well, you don't know either. In fact, you never even found out who he was, did you? Well, he certainly wasn't a plumber. His voice... Well, he was a gentleman. Well, that's it, then. Gentleman plumber. <laughs> you know, when this is all over, you and this... Ought to get married. You check, double check, and go on checking. That makes me a pro. You wouldn't understand that. I understand perfectly. 
You kill for money. Oh, yes, and what about you? What do you kill for, hmm? A course, a crusade, or maybe someone just stepped on your bloody toes and you want to kick back? I have a reason. So do I. 50,000 of them, all of them money. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Thought I had a car. I don't see him. I swore I had a car. Morning, sir. Sorry. Uh, my name's Martin. Police. Police? Anything wrong? Uh, nothing at all. It's just a routine check. Cops. Is the principal of the school around? Oh, no, I'm afraid not. He's with the rest watching the parade. Uh, there is one member of the staff here, though. George. Mm. <laughs> Mr. Mallard. Where can I find him? More. Hide that lot in there. And yourself. Jeffries. He might be in the demonstration room. If not, I don't know where he is. You were looking for Mr. Muller. That's right. He's up here. Ah. Uh. Okay. Fine. Thanks. Frank. Yep. Who was it at the door? Police. What? Oh, calm down. It's just a routine check. You understand, sir, we have to check all the premises within range of the parade, especially those on high ground. I won't keep you long, Mr. Mallard. I see. You mean snipers, that sort of thing. Well, you can see for yourself. <laughs> Not a telescopic sight anywhere. I know, and I always feel a bit foolish about having to do it. But I have to go through the process just the same. You know, this would make a darn good vantage point. Not expecting trouble, are you? No. At the same time, we're always expecting trouble, if you know what I mean. What's through here? Uh, it's just a storeroom. I could get the key if you think it's... Uh, no, I'll take necessary. your word for it. <laughs> I'll just look at the other rooms, if you don't mind, Mr. Mallard. Of course. Do you think I ought to mention it to him? Mention what? To whom? Oh, the police. Tell them about the gun oil and my letter not being posted to the plumbers. Oh, come on, Sally. I think that's about it. Fine. Uh, but just one more thing. You say you're the only member of the staff here at the moment? Yes. Then who was the chap who called me up here? Oh, you mean Jeff. Uh, it's just a friend of mine. Came to watch the parade with me. Ah. Well, it should all go off without a hitch if I have anything to do with it. Ah. 
I am going to talk to him. Oh, Sally, hold to on. To him or George or someone. I tell you, there's something wrong. They laugh at you, Sally. I tell you, there's something wrong. I sense it. Just to keep the inmates in. Relic of the previous owners. Title gentry. Right to the last, they were trying to turn their houses into fortresses. You know what they say? An Englishman's home is his castle. I'm sorry you've been troubled. That's no trouble at all, Sergeant. Goodbye, Mr. Mullard. Bye. All okay now. For you, maybe. But for my blood pressure. <laughs> it's marvelous to see how. Come on. Get this lot fixed up. There won't be any more interruptions. Don't touch that. Well, what's the matter with you? All well, I'm doing is just moving it from one spot to another. Right. right. No. Work it out between you. I'm just going to prowl around. See that everything's all right. You said it was. Just now. All right. See that everything stays. All right. He was there. Not George, and yet I heard that policeman call him Mr. Mullard, but it wasn't George. Sally, how do you know that? Oh, but George have walked right past me. Well, would he? And anyway, it was the same man, the one who took my letter and didn't mail it. Sally, Sally! Oh, don't Sally me, I'm right, I tell you. You're overwrought, that's for sure. Oh, don't keep saying that. Well, you are playing the hypersensitive today, aren't you? You sense they're not plumbers. You sense it's the same man as before. Well, how, Sally? Tell me that. Exactly. How do you know it was the same man? Well, you ought to know that. That's right, Mike. You know how we tell it's George or the principal, just by the sound of the way they walk. For sure, because we've, we've been with them for months. Well, some of us, years. But Sally thinks she can pick out a complete stranger... In this to... case, yes! Well, why? Tell me that. Why would a stranger be prowling around here? Why would he ignore you like that? I don't know. Sally! Sally? Sally! Look, they were only kidding. Oh, leave me alone. Where are you going? I'm going to work some steam off, that's what. I'm going to give that dummy of ours a real going over. Break every bone in its plastic body. This is 
are all ready to go again. Come on, Frank. I'll give you a chance to win back that million. <clears throat> Come on, she get over it. Huh? Sally, that's just nerves, frustration. Happens to us all occasionally. So we think, why me? Gets us all, you know. No, I wasn't worried about that. What then? Well, I was just thinking. <laughs> Suppose she was right. Come on, Pete. Deal the cards, eh? Stop that. Hmm? Just knock it off. Do you mind? Practice session for passive movements, intermediate class. George Mullard speaking. Now, it must be remembered that passive movements are slow, purposeful movements performed by the operator with the patient completely relaxed. They're performed to maintain movement, preserve the blood supply to the limb, and to keep the pattern of movement in the patient's brain. You'll appreciate they have a particular role to play in the treatment of the unconscious patient. Queen straight. Ace of spades, king of spades. Uh -huh. Therefore, make sure that the patient is in a comfortable position and that you are correctly placed to grasp your model. Adopt the position of stride standing on the side of the limb that you're treating. Your grips must be comfortable and therefore your hands must be perfectly relaxed. Students should not start the treatment until after they've completed their hand exercise routine. Now you should be ready. Grasp the patient's upper limb on the undersurface of the elbow and around the outer border of the hand. Two pairs. <laughs> Feel this. Feel it. That's right. It's a gun. Oh, you know that, don't you? I want you to tell your friends I've got a gun. All right? Now, listen. I've got a gun, so stay right where you are as she gets hurt. Now, come on, oh, tell her. Mr. Aim the truth, Frank. He does have a gun. It's pointed right at this little lady's head. So back up, all of you. Back the way you came. Now, come on, move. Come on, move. Sally, are you all right? She's going to be fine, just as long as you do what you're told. Now, Sally! Come on, I'm all right! Jeffries! It's what all the, right. What the hell is going on? Nothing I can't handle. Get back to the little doctor. Come on, move. Are you what do you want nothing from you son now listen i'm gonna lock you in for a bit now just be good stay out of trouble no one gets hurt understood
Everything's under control. Is that a fact? Then what the hell was going on down there? Why don't you relax? Hmm? Watch some television. These people have had a long wait, some from late last night. But there is a ripple of anticipation now because there isn't much longer to wait. Hear that? It's not much longer. Not much longer. Why? Why, George? You were such a harmless little man. They need this house, that's why. What for? Well, didn't you hear him talking to man on the stairs? Get back to the launcher. Launcher? Listen. Yeah, well, rocket launcher, I suppose. Well, rockets, fireworks. No, rocket rockets. The type the army use. That's crazy. Why on earth would they want to... Of course. And so far, everything has gone off without a hitch. From the welcome at the airport to the final drive to this town. And we have news that he is on his way. This great man, this man of peace, who has ironically been the target of men of violence. That's why, this man of peace, in his bulletproof car, bulletproof. we do hey Mike you know that frustration you were talking about if if we could just get a glimpse of the world some gray through the darkness no the, the windows are shuttered and the door is locked we might just as well be helpless babies no, maybe we could break the shutters. Silently. With the door, then. Without making a noise. The first sound and one of them would be down here. And we wouldn't know. One of them might be right here in this room now. And we wouldn't know. No, it's... It's locked from the outside. Five. It's 10.30 now. It's 30 minutes. Half an hour. And not a darn thing we can do but sit back and watch it happen. Except we can't watch anything. <laughs> Got over your nerves yet, have you? Who said I had nerves? I did. I see you twitchy. I told you, didn't I? Nothing would go wrong. 
It's not over yet. Oh, it soon will be. No hitches, no problems we couldn't handle. Do you know, didn't really need you along at all. I'm here to see the job done. Hmm. You could have read about it in the papers. Watched it on telly. Our organization is paying you and Anderson a lot of money. Just regard me as official observer to see that we get what we've paid for. You'll get that all right. One barbecued statesman. And no comebacks. Bad enough, we can't do anything without hearing it happen. What's up? I felt a draught. Cold air on my cheek. So? The door doesn't fit too Cold well. air! Well. See? She's right. So she can feel cold air. Now, this place is centrally heated. Cold air. It must be coming from outside somewhere. Oh. The windows. They're closed, aren't they? Uh, anyway, that's the wrong direction. Yes, I can feel it too. Yes, coming from this direction. Oh, it's probably just an air vent. No, that'd be low to the ground, wouldn't it? Well, that's the usual thing. That's the notice board. I found it! It's coming from here! Peter? Yeah? Let me get the notice board off. door at that height doesn't make sense, does it? Oh, wait a minute. Hey, Mike, do you remember George telling us about this house, how it was donated by a wealthy family? Well, yes, it used to be their country pad or something. Right. And this was the dining room. Yes, I remember George telling us how ornate the ceiling was. It was the dining well, room. Well, this could be a dumb waiter. What? That's it. It's the dumb waiter. But hang on, we're on the ground floor, aren't we? There's nothing beneath us. There's a cellar. A wine cellar. That's it. And this must lead straight down there. And no comebacks. That's what you said, isn't it? No comebacks? I know why you're here now. Official observer. Hatchet man. If anything goes wrong, gets fouled up, and the finger could be pointed back at your organization, then you're supposed to eliminate the vital witnesses. Namely, me and Anderson. Right. But you keep assuring me that nothing will go wrong, so you don't have to worry, do you? Just let me do the worrying from now on. That's better. Oh, we still have a little time. So why don't you go and see if you can find some coffee for us? I'll look after your lady love. We'll talk about this again. After. That's it! Shh. He's 
gone. Shh. Look, get a chance. Okay. Now go. Then it has to be me. No, no. Yes, Frank, of course. All you men have tried it. It has to be me. These ropes hold, that's all. Come on, Frank, we haven't got much time. Look, Sally, when you get down there, there should be a door, maybe leading directly to the outside. Now, if it's unlocked, Yes, I just... know exactly what to do. I make straight for the road and I yell at the first car or person I hear. Now, come on, Frank. And keep your hands tucked in. Sally? I think I'm there! Ah! Sally, are you all right? Sally?
One of them. Somebody's grabbed her. Oh, that's it, then. No, that isn't it. Look, they'll be bringing her back here, won't yes, they? Yes, but what can we... Well, we have to move fast. I'm a careful man. Lucky for me, not you. That's lucky I was prowling about. I've got them. I think I've got them. Oh. What's happening? He's unconscious. Mike, how long have we got? Five, may maybe six minutes. I don't know. Again, I can't find the gun. But help me. Numbers, let's spread out. Clockwise. Methodical. Frank! Frank, I found the gun! Frank! What good is the gun to us? Well, you never know. Stop them. And there he is now, approaching the town. There's a final attempt to push forward to the front for a better view of the motorcade that is literally only minutes away. Do you mind? I'm watching. I don't want any distractions. Not now. What's the matter? You not nervous or something? No. I'm just getting a little Listen, bit Listen, you sick. want it done right, don't you? You want it finished. Where's Anderson? Where he always is. He's checking up, prowling around, making sure there are no last-minute hitches. Well, shouldn't he be here for the Listen, bang? Listen, just the sound of your voice distracts me. That could put me off, and I can't afford that. Nor can you. Fine, I'll get a drink. Yes, you get your drink, and stay out till it's over. Oh, you'll hear the bang. Even from this distance, you'll hear the bang. It'll be my turn, Mr. Moore. The second bang, you weren't here at all. Not at all.
Absolutely square to the door, understand? Yes. Now, I want you to point my arm at the window in that room. What? Just do as I say. I can't, Frank. You can. I can't remember where the window is. <laughs> Look, <laughs> Sally. <laughs> Just go through the room mentally. Talk it through. Mm. 
through the door, three paces, then there's a table. Good girl. A pace and a half to the right, then there's the sofa. Three paces to the right, then there's the desk. The window, Sally. The window. Oh, that's to the right of the desk. No, no, it's to the left of the sofa from here. Desk. to the left. There, there, that's it. I'm now pointing at the window. Yes. Right. Now push me forward, slowly. His average height, about five foot nine. Ready, Mike? Ready. Sure.